Well, I think that we've done a good job of representing the interests and concerns of the people of the 3rd District of Missouri. Uh, we come home every weekend and continue to network back with all of the constituents and uh, with regards to their concerns, take those back to D.C. And I think we've been very effective in being able to address those when we get there. How should the United States address the problem of ISIS overseas? It's continuing to grow. Uh, we have got to try and contain them, and I think you do that by cutting off their money supply, number one. And number two, I think you, you uh, surround them with people, and when I say people, it's basically countries that support us and our ability to try and contain them. Um, in order to do that, you have to have relationships from around the world with all the different countries to be able to put sanctions on them, to be able to dry up their funding, as well as to get them in a corner, so to speak, with uh, regards to military activities. We don't need to be the, the, the country that goes in there and and confines them, but we need to be a part of and lead the group that does do that. A number of incumbent politicians have been characterized as career politicians, and some of your opponents have leveled the same criticism at you. How do you respond to that? I was in the private sector for over 30 years uh, as a small business person, uh, over 25 years uh, raising hogs and cattle on my farm. So I think, uh, you know, this is not my, my first career. This is my um, my my ability to give back to the citizens of the state. This next question comes from a viewer. Where do you stand on the Trans-Pacific Partnership? And so far, I haven't taken a position one way or the other on it. Standpoint, it's not a finished product. Um, I have a lot of the agricultural groups come to me. They want me to support it. I have a lot of manufacturing in my district, and a lot of those folks don't want it. What fixes specifically are you looking for? The manufacturers uh, are concerned that the subsidies and tariffs that the other countries are putting on the subsidies are giving the products that compete against our company's products, as well as the tariffs they're putting on our company's products as they go to those countries, is such that they're at a competitive disadvantage, and they want that fixed. Immigration has dominated this year's presidential campaign. What policy would you push for? You start with securing the borders, and then you enforce the law, and then you fix the visa system that we have in place right now, which is very cumbersome, it's very time consuming. It does not do a good job of tracking the people once they get here. When you have 60% of people who have visas that, are, that, that skip out and you can't find them, obviously the system is broken. Speaker Paul Ryan this week announced he would no longer campaign for or defend his own party's presidential nominee. Now, what's your reaction to that, and do you still plan to support Donald Trump? Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to continue to support Donald Trump. I have endorsed him, and I uh, am not backing away from that. I think if we're honest with uh, everybody, um, you know, there is no perfect candidate out there. He's a human being. He's fallible. He's got his imperfections. Uh, end of the day, though, you compare him to what I believe is the opposite of him in, in uh, the, the Mrs. Clinton. Uh, I think that she's unacceptable as far as I'm concerned from the standpoint. Uh, I think she's going to lead our country in, a, in the wrong direction. Uh, I think that Mr. Trump can lead us in a bit of a different direction, a better direction. I think he can truly make us great again. In 10 words or fewer, why should voters pick you? Well, I think I have the experience and the, and the track record to show that I can get things done.